Hey guys, what's up? John here from flyatmikealpha.com and today we're going to be taking a quick look at runway lighting and runway centerline markings, basically the paint on the runway, all the different markings on the runway from the center line to the touchdown zone to the aiming points and all that great stuff. Let's get right to it. So starting off as we're flying in here at night, the first thing we obviously notice on the runway is the green threshold light. So that denotes the threshold, normally what that big white line is during the daytime. So we see the green lights there, then we can see our touchdown zone lights. So we see that we have three lights either side of the center line, they're spaced at 100 foot intervals, they're angled in at 4 degrees, tow it in towards the center line, so they seem a little bit brighter uh, when you're just right at the right angle when they're facing towards you. and those mark our touchdown zone. So the first 3,000 feet of the runway, or the first half of the runway, if the runway is less than 6,000 feet, of course. And we can also see that we have our runway center line lights. So those are the white dots going down the center of the runway. So the runway center line lights are spaced out every 50 feet, and it's just a single light, and they're within two and a half feet of the center line. So they might not be directly on that white line, they might be slightly offset, but every 50 feet you'll have one of these white lights right in the center there. We can also see as we move on down the runway we have runway edge lighting. So we have white lights that denote the edge of the runway. Now the runway edge lights do change color. The last 2,000 feet of the runway or if the runway is less than 4,000 feet long the last half of the runway becomes yellow lights instead of white lights on the side to let you know the end of the runway is coming up pretty soon. As we touch down and roll out here we can look down the runway and we'll notice that as we get towards the end of the runway, we can see the red terminating bar. So the end of the runway is coming up. The lights are green at the beginning of the runway for the threshold. The other threshold is red as we're facing it. We also notice that our lights on the center line change from white every 50 feet to alternating red and white every 50 feet now. And that's letting us know that we have less than 3,000 feet of runway remaining. We can see as we make a right turn off here, we actually have lead off lights that are directing us towards the taxiway. They're green and yellow, they're kind of amberish, but green and yellow technically direct us off the runway and denotes the taxiway that we're getting onto. And then of course the taxiway at a big airport that's made for taxiing around low visibility is going to have green center line marking on the taxiway. So just like we have the white center line marks on the runway, we'll have green lights on the taxiway to note the center line of the taxiway. Don't land on a piece of pavement that has green lights going down the center of it. Land on the piece of pavement that has white lights going down the center of it. Don't pull a delta and land on the taxiway. So how do we control all those lights? How do we control the intensity that they're at? If they're turned off, how do we turn them on? So if you're at a non-towered airport, you can go ahead and click your microphone nice and slow. Three clicks for low, five clicks for medium, or seven clicks for high. And those clicks have to be within five seconds. Space them out nice and slow. Don't go too rapid fire. The uh, radio on the ground will be able to hear the difference between the clicks if you go too quickly. Of course, if you're at a towered airport, you can just ask for low, medium, or high. And we can control things like the approach lights, the edge lights, the taxiway edge lights, the runway center line, touchdown zone lights, taxiway center line lights. And sometimes when you select low, that actually means some of these lights will turn off totally. You select medium, some of them turn on and then on to medium. Others, when you select high, pretty much everything comes on and it's usually all at high intensity. So great to be able to see at night or in low visibility. Usually high intensity is actually for low visibility flying IFR, and maybe when it's just a nice clear night, you might select low or medium. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what kind of markings we're gonna see. We're gonna look at these markings in the daytime just because it's easier to see what we're looking at, but of course, these markings are gonna help you at night when you're landing. So what kind of markings do we have to work with? Well, first we have the yellow shoulder markings on the sides of a runway or sides of a taxiway that denote just pavement that can't quite support the weight of an aircraft, it's a no-go area for airplanes. It's just a wider area of pavement. Those yellow stripes are the shoulder markings for the runway or taxiway. As we look here, the yellow line before displaced thresholds, though it's a demarcation bar, so it's just denoting the start of the displaced threshold, or basically an area where you're not going to be taxing past. So you can see on the left here, we would come onto the displaced threshold, take off, or here, it's actually a taxiway before it hits the displaced threshold, so we have that three foot wide yellow demarcation bar. We're used to seeing this displaced threshold here, but if we look past the displaced threshold, we have what people often call piano keys. Those are actually runway threshold stripes. Okay, that's the proper name for them, not piano keys, runway threshold stripes. And oftentimes they denote how wide the runway is. 
So when we have four stripes, it means the runway is 60 feet wide, six stripes, 75 feet wide, eight stripes, 100 feet, 12 stripes, 150 feet, 16 stripes, 200 feet. Now, if they decided if you're at a not so busy airport in Podunk, Nowhere, Billy, USA, sometimes those stripes don't always coordinate to the width of the runway. And in that case, they're supposed to just paint eight stripes. And that could just be some non-standard width of a runway that's maybe 68 feet or 42 feet wide or something like that. Other markings on the runway we have are touchdown zone markings. So we can see here, we have these bars painted to the side of the runway center line and they're spaced out at 500 foot intervals. They're 75 feet long. And typically in the first thousand feet of the runway, you'll see the three bars. Second thousand feet of the runway, you'll see two bars. And then third thousand feet of the runway, you'll see just single bars. Now you can also see how they skip a set because normally those touchdown zone markings would interfere with the aiming point that's roughly a thousand feet down the runway. So on this particular picture, we just have right around 500 feet or so, we have the first runway threshold we have the first runway touchdown zone markings, and then we have them again, roughly 1,500 feet, 2,000 feet, and 2,500 feet on down the runway. There's always gonna be an 1,800 foot gap between the uh, touchdown zone markings for each opposing side of the runway. So this runway five right for two, three left, they're not gonna, there's gonna be at least an 1,800 foot gap between them, so you won't get confused with the touchdown zone markings from five right to two, three left going the other direction. Lastly, let's go ahead and talk about our aiming point on the runway. So the aiming point is just those big white bars painted on there. They're 150 feet long. The width depends on how wide the runway is itself. And people often mistakenly call them the thousand footers. They're not the thousand footers. They're roughly a thousand feet down the runway. The FA prefers for them to start being painted about a thousand, 20 feet down the runway but they can be painted anywhere depending on factors like the slope that the runway has into it. Maybe it's an uphill or down sloping runway. Maybe there's obstacles. Maybe there's an intersecting runway that prevents them from being painted right there or a taxiway or something like that. So a number of factors could affect where they actually get painted. Now notice that we have the pappies just in front of the, the aiming point. So the idea is if you're aiming for that point and you touch down right on that aiming point, then your pappies are gonna be slightly in front of you because you're sitting above the pavement. So if you were to be flying like a glider or something really close to the ground, yes, you would land a beam the pappies past the aiming point. But if you're flying something like a jet where you sit a little higher up or a larger propeller driven airplane where you're landing in the pilot itself is maybe 15 feet in the air when the wheels are actually touching, then you're going to actually be landing right on that aiming point. Lastly, let's go ahead and take a quick look here at runway entrance lights. So we have runway entrance lights and takeoff hold position lights. The idea here is anytime you're crossing a runway, those green taxiway centerline lights are going to alternate green to yellow. But at some bigger airports, they have runway entrance lights. And it's kind of like a stop sign or a red light to tell you to stop, don't cross the runway. Now, just because those red lights are turned off doesn't mean you're cleared across the runway or just because they all of a sudden go away doesn't mean you're all of a sudden cleared across. ATC still has to issue you the clearance, but it's just an added safety feature to catch your attention to make sure that you do stop and hold short of the runway when you're supposed to. If you see those lights on and you were told to cross the runway, then you might want to query ATC and ask them, hey, are you sure you want me to cross the runway right now? I see the runway entrance lights are red and maybe they mistakenly cleared you to cross the runway when somebody else was getting ready to take off. We have the same thing for taking off. When you line up and wait at a busy airport, they will often have red lights saying, hey, don't take off just yet because there's traffic crossing downfield, crossing the runway down the runway further in front of you. Now, again, just because those red lights go away doesn't mean you're clear to take off, but it is an added safety feature just for extra situational awareness and to catch your attention from inadvertently taking off when you weren't actually clear to take off. That sums up our quick and dirty version of runway lights, taxiway lights, and runway markings. Any questions on this at all, guys, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. We'll do another video on approach lighting systems because there's so many different types. So we'll get to that in another video. But like I said, any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep up with our latest videos as they come out every week. This video is actually part of our online private pilot ground school and part of our online instrument pilot ground school. Available at flyatmikehealth.com, totally free for private pilots. Make sure you check it out. Go ahead and check us out on Patreon. We greatly appreciate y'all's support helping us fund this website, keeping it a totally free online open resource for everyone. As always, guys, if you cannot fly every day, fly at mikealpha.com. We will see you all next time. <laughs>